CNN political commentator Paris Dinard, who served as White House Director of Black Outreach in the George W. Bush administration. Also, Cornell West, Professor of Philosophy at Harvard's Divinity School and Professor Emeritus at Princeton. I appreciate both of you being with us. Dr. West, the, the president says his comments have nothing to do with race. You hear Maggie Haberman's reporting that the president views his comments about the NFL as part of a culture war he's waging to shore up his base. How do you see it? Well, no, I think the president needs to get off the symbolic crack pipe and have a sense of reality. The reason why these courageous young people are standing up is because they have a love for black people, a love of justice and a love of fairness, and they're concerned about a racist criminal justice system. And it's a beautiful thing to see this kind of moral and spiritual awakening taking place among the athletes. So they represent not just athletic excellence, but they're now aspiring to spiritual and moral excellence. Excellence is about unarmed truth, unapologetic love. You step down in order to let the world know you have a love for these people who are not being treated right. You have a love for these people who are being treated unfairly. Now, as you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, though, brother, so every flag is under the cross for me. And the cross signifies unarmed truth, unapologetic love. Patriotism is fine, but when it scapegoats Mexicans and Arabs and Jews and gays and lesbians and trans, when it, when it scapegoats black people and brown people, then there's a critique to be brought to bear in the name of truth, in the name of love. And it's fairly clear that uh, President Trump has a disrespect for the American people. He has a disrespect for the flag when he scapegoats American people and when he lies to the American people. Mendacity is a form of violation in patriotism. It's a form of violation in the face of truth and in the face of love. So the question becomes, how wonderful to see the white brothers and sisters, all the different colors, standing up out of a love for black people who are being victimized too often by a racist criminal justice system. Par it's a beautiful Par thing to behold. Paris, I want you to be able to respond to, to what Dr. West said. I mean, do you see this as, as standing up against racism? Uh, no, Anderson, because a year ago, and I said it before, a year ago I didn't see Pete Carroll on your program talking about this issue as it relates to racial injustice, criminal uh, acts by, or, or, or the brutality by police departments or white supremacy and things of that nature. I didn't see the Steelers or the Dallas Cowboys taking a knee in solidarity, solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. They were silent. The NFL was mute, was, was mute on it. Now, what you see is President Donald Trump at a or at a rally in, in Alabama, raised this issue. And there are certain things called unintended consequences. And so as Dr. West just pointed out, now the, the beauty and the unity that he is articulating, that white brothers and sisters are joining hands, locking arms, and doing all of this in the name of what Colin Kaepernick was originally doing, is because I believe the president is challenging the norms. He's challenging, and he has actually become a catalyst for this conversation. So it actually is, to Dr. West's point, an unattended consequence of his statement, which I still believe to be factual. I have no problem with Colin Kaepernick or the rest of the people that are, that are protesting, wanting to protest and wanting to stand in solidarity with those people who have been victimized repeatedly by the system. That's why a lot of Republicans and conservatives have joined hands to talk about criminal justice reform because it's an important bipartisan issue. That said, I don't see how their response a year ago matches what their response today because it wasn't there. Dr. West, what about that? Colin Kaepernick was the only one doing it for a long period of time. And, and by the way, no, didn't no. get re... Well, a football player, I should say, and didn't get, re, you know, didn't get rehired. And that's unfair to Brother Colin. But no, no, Brother Paris has a point. There's no doubt that an awakening has taken place in the last 12 to 18 months. Just because people are in solidarity now in an explicit way, and they weren't before, doesn't mean it's still wrong, it's still unjust, and it still required somebody to stand up. At that time, we had a voice in the wilderness, Brother Colin. We read Brother Eric Reed's magnificent op-ed piece. Oh, he's a truth teller. He, was, he stood there with Colin. Sometimes it's just a few who are speaking the truth. Sometimes the, few, the truth catches fire, and that's what's happening now. So, Brother Paris, you're right. A year ago, they didn't stand. They were still sleepwalking. Now, I'll say to you, Brother Paris, are you sleepwalking? Are you going to deny that 
the victims of a racist criminal justice system are not part and parcel of the reasons why these brothers are, 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 are kneeling down? You know that racial injustice is an integral part of why they are expressing their love in the way that they are. And, Dr. West, I've never denied that. All I've said was I question and have issue with the manner in which they are protesting, because I think because they have done it in a way that, in my opinion, and, and millions of Americans feel, is disrespectful to the flag, to mm. the people who are the national anthem and things like that, it is a distraction. I, so I don't, I do not deny that these injustices oh. happen. No. They've happened to me. I just don't oh, no. like the tactic. No, but my dear brother, all I'm saying is your president that you have disliking for, he denies it. And if you defend him, then you're defending the denial. You and I know that it happens all the time. You and I know that these brothers are, 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 are standing up as they kneel in order to put a spotlight on this issue. That means race is very much, not just race, justice, fairness. Race is too abstract. Justice, fairness, treating black people with dignity and decency. That's the fundamental issue as to why they're doing what they're doing. The president denies it. You support the president, therefore you support the denial, as I understand it, unless you're breaking with the president publicly at this moment. That'd be a beautiful thing, too, my brother. <laughs> Paris, I want you to respond. No, I'm not breaking with the president on this, because I agree with him. I time think to break with him. Time to break. It's not time to break with him. I think he's right. You, they are disrespecting the flag. They have a right to protest. They have a right to 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 be upset with the justice system, be upset with the things that they see that are happening to people that look just like me and you. But I think they're going about it the wrong way. And the examples that no. Anderson put out on, on the videos that, that he, he played before this a couple segments ago, none of those issues, none of those incidents involve people disrespecting the flag. But wait a minute, the, Paris, at the time, I mean... They could Protesters have. Protesters all the time get accused of being unpatriotic, get accused in their time. It's often only in retrospect that people look back and say, oh, yeah, I would have done the same thing. I mean, when, when those athletes held up, you know, a, a gloved fist at the Olympics, they were pilloried for that. But I mean, they, so, so you're saying they weren't disrespecting the flag, but, but it was viewed at the time as hugely disrespectful. And all I'm saying is uh, the, the, the actions that we're seeing right now of NFL teams. Look, I think the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones is a smart man. They had it right. They took a knee because that's what they wanted to protest before they the national that. anthem. You know, we, and we, then they stood for the national anthem. We've got to take a quick break. We're gonna, we want, I want to continue this conversation because it's an important one. We'll be right back. A few moments ago, we showed you a photo that John Lewis tweeted of civil rights leaders taking a knee in prayer and protest. Someone replied with a phrase that fits the moment. It reads, if you ever wondered what it would be like to live in the civil rights movement and what role you would play, you're in it right now. Back with Dr. Cornell West and Paris Denard. Uh, Dr. West, I'm wondering, uh, to Paris's point, that this is disrespectful to the flag, that it's unpatriotic to do this during the national anthem. What do you say? Well, I mean, the important thing, though, brother, brother Cooper, is that you got two claims being made by the president. One is race has nothing to do with it. That's a lie. Second is disrespectful. No, my father served in the U.S. Army with dignity in a Jim Crow army, but he, he served in the name of truth and freedom so that that flag signifies at its best a freedom for people to dissent if they can do so with a love and with a concern with the least of these. So there's many people in the army who in no way feel disrespected if people are fighting for justice because the flag is not the monopoly of one group. It's for the expression of those who are fighting for truth, liberty, and freedom across the board. So this idea that somehow uh, disrespect it is, is, a, is, is a motivation for stepping, for, 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 for kneeling. I mean, good God, in the 1960s, we had a whole host of folk who turned their backs on the flag because for them it signified criminality. Vietnam, it signified a whole host of things that were violations of humanity. And so in this sense, the idea of disrespect, especially coming from Donald Trump, he is the disrespecter par excellence. 
So by what moral authority, what spiritual authority does he have to talk about disrespect. He's been disrespecting the American people and the flag ever since he won in many ways when it comes to our precious Mexicans and Arabs and Palestinians and Jews and black people and gays and lesbians and trans and bisexuals and others. So in that sense, let's just be honest, Brother Paris. Paris, you heard Hollow, Maggie, shallow. Paris, you heard Maggie Haberman's reporting that people around the president are saying to her, look, this is very clearly about appealing to white working class base and getting them riled up. Is that, is that respectful of the flag? I mean, to use patriotism, to use the flag, if that's what the president is doing, to, to rile up supporters? I, I think that politicians of both sides go to the, the, go, I remember when Secretary Clinton would go to uh, predominantly black churches and Bill Clinton, President Clinton would do it too, and they all of a sudden get this Southern drawl and they would change their cadence and they would bring up issues that were particular to that, to that crowd because they knew their base. They would talk about particular, that's what politicians do. And I think what you saw, what President Trump did, is he knew that in Alabama, at a, at a, a state that takes football very seriously, and a, in a campaign rally, that was going to be a soundbite that was really going to gain traction because he knew the base at that time, in that place, really took the issue of American patriotism very seriously and the flag very seriously. And so he was playing to his base. But Do you not think there was a racial component by saying those people, our anthem, calling them sons of bitches in front of a overwhelmingly white crowd in Alabama? I think, I think, the major, I think from now uh, until the end of the year, if the president has a rally, the majority of the people, a political rally, the majority of the people, they're going to be white. So we just have to get used to the fact that only 8 percent African-Americans voted for him. So my, most times when there's a rally, it's going to be white. So we have to take that off the table. So you're saying race was not, had nothing to do with this? I don't think race had anything to do with him calling out the fact that the, they were kneeling and being disrespectful to the fact, because I believe if they had been white athletes doing it be, and being disrespectful to the flag, it would still be wrong. It would still be disrespectful. And Dr. West, with all due respect, my grandfather from mm -hmm. Port Hill, Georgia, served in the military. And when he, when he died honorably, uh, well, when he died, and was dis his, the flag was put across his casket because he was discharged from the military honorably. He taught me and many in our family, when you walk into a restaurant, you take off your hat. When a woman gets up from the table, you stand up. When the flag is, is flown, you put your hand over your heart, you show respect. And also, when the black national anthem is sung, you stand up and you respect that. I was at an event with the president when I used to work for President George W. Bush for African American History Month. He did not know at the time that when the black national anthem played, you stand up. He looked over at Secretary Rice and she, she nodded at him, and he stood up out of respect because everybody in the room was doing it, and he did it because it was the respectful right thing to do. And I think that what we have in this conversation has nothing to do with the ethnicity of the people that are doing the act. It is the act in and of itself which I find to be disrespectful. Dr. West? Yeah, but the, the idea that it doesn't have anything to do with race, my brother, that's what we're talking about. And God bless your beloved grandfather, though. I know he, he lived with dignity in his own way. But you and I know when it comes to the great uh, black national anthem written by Rosamond and, 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 and James Well and Johnson, if that anthem was associated with a black supremacy that mistreated white brothers and sisters, that had police, that had economic, civic, educational expressions that somehow was subordinating other folk, many black people wouldn't stand at that anthem either. So it's not a question of just one anthem versus another, just any flag, any anthem. If it stands in the way of truth, stands in the way of love, it ought to be criticized. So it's a question of morality and spirituality. The problem is President Trump, he's all spectacle, no moral substance. He's cold-hearted. He's mean-spirited. He's involved in scapegoating as a way of manipulating and dividing American people in order for him to keep his visibility, he's a Frankenstein created in many ways by mass media, and now he's locked into it. And there are no grounds, my dear brother Paris, for any kind of serious defense of such behavior. Mm. And I think 10 years from now, when you watch yourself on television, God bless you, you're going to say, oh, my God, was I defending this kind of behavior of this kind of president, this kind of xenophobic president, this kind of president stirring such contempt toward the weak, such contempt toward the vulnerable? That 
has no spiritual and moral grounds whatsoever. I don't care what, what color the president is. I don't care who the president is. It just happens to be President Trump. Well, Dr. West, I appreciate you being on the program. Paris Denard as well. Good discussion. Thank you very much.